All you smart and moderately obsessed people who already knew everything on my first 10 things list will probably know most of the things on this one. But I think number 10 will surprise you. Also, stick around to the end. We're doing a giveaway. Yeah, I'm Steve and this is Ratho. So here's 10 more things you didn't know about Brandon Sanderson. Number one, he is a supervillain, or at least he has a secret underground lair. If you watched the CBS Mornings interview after his Kickstarter exploded, you saw some glimpses of it. But our first sneak peek of it was back in 2018. He included pictures of the construction process in his newsletter, which if you haven't subscribed to yet, Come on, I know a guy who knows a guy and have been to the Cosmere house next door, so while I haven't been able to infiltrate the evil lair, I was so close, I have heard a lot about what's in it and have seen a few select things. 20 foot ceilings, giant fish tanks, stained glass windows, full size movie screen, the works. Number two, he's a podcaster. Beginning in 2008, the Writing Excuses podcast, hosted by Brandon, Dan Wells, author of the John Cleaver books, and Howard Taylor, creator of the the Schlock Mercenary webcomic, dives deep into the process and techniques of authorship. In 2011, Mary Robinette Kowal, who had been a guest on the podcast previously, became a regular host. It's still going strong on season 17, though Brandon has decreased his involvement in order to focus on his increasingly demanding writing schedule. And also on his other podcast with Dan, Intentionally Blank, where they talk about Honestly, mostly Marvel movies. And people stealing food. It's a good time. Number three! He didn't like reading until the eighth grade. Yeah, I screwed that up in the first video. Reading from notes is hard. In fact, let's just get some updates out of the way right now. Here's some more favorites. Favorite game is Civ 6. Favorite movie, Lord of the Rings or Willow. <laughs> Favorite snack while playing magic, peanuts. Favorite character in Firefly is Wash. I'm a leaf on the wind. Favorite living author, Guy Gavriel K. Favorite book cover, Way of Kings. Basically just Michael Whelan. Favorite RPG is Final Fantasy X. Favorite word, Rutabaga. Favorite planeswalker, Ashiok or Urza. Favorite movie, Gattaca among others. Favorite Pokemon? Oshawott. Number four, he's a YouTuber. Hey guys, it's your boy Brando Sando. Be sure to like and subscribe. He teaches creative writing at BYU, and recordings of his lectures have been available online since 2012, with another set coming in 2016. Not only that, but his own YouTube channel just hit 400,000 subscribers, and has FAQs, weekly announcements, and progress updates, and regular hours-long Q&A streams. I figure if if you're subscribed to me, you're already subscribed to him, but just in case, go do it. Number five, there's a bunch of content of his that you haven't read. I know, considering my audience, that may be a bold statement, but he has sample chapters, deleted scenes, and annotations to a bunch of his books online. You can also check out a bunch of his short stories, including one from high school, a couple free full-length novels, and for you audiobook users out there, a collection of all of the in-world maps and illustrations from the books. Number six, he's an active Redditor. Of course, you probably know of the various Sanderson-centric subreddits out there. r slash Sanderson, r slash Stormlight, r slash Cremposting is glorious, but Brandon himself has a fairly regular contribution to the front page of the internet. Reddit is where they get most of his questions for his Q&A and spoiler streams, where he posts more extensive updates on his process and progress, and even where he sometimes responds to people needing relationship advice. Seriously, so wholesome. Number seven, we are well on our way to getting some Brando stories for the big and or small screen. Back in the 2020 State of the Sanderson, he listed a few rights holders for various books and series. DMG Entertainment owns Stormlight, Cineflix has Legion, Universal Television bought Skyward, Alcatraz has been optioned by Gaumont, and writing has been happening on Dark One, and in a very hands-on way by Brandon, Mistborn. And then he decided to drop this bombshell on us a few weeks ago. I would be surprised if we aren't on set this time next year. So yeah, he's a producer on Wheel of Time and we're gonna be getting something else within the next year or so. Number eight. He is a world hopper. Brandon Sanderson, himself or references to him, are in dozens of other properties. 
The Boss Monster Card Game by Brotherwise Games, the same company that produced the Stormlight Archive Call to Adventure game, and the soon-to-be-live Stormlight Archive Miniatures set on Kickstarter, features one Branadin Wordblessed in a mist cloak and colon blue uniform, holding a Sil Spear and drawing an Aeon, who apparently never stops writing. The Wizards 101 online game features an NPC called Brandon Mistborn. Enter the Gungeon has an item called a Sprun, a small glowing green ball that follows your character around, until a certain random trigger transforms it into the Wind Gunner. According to the Ammonomicon entry, The Way of Guns, traditionally this means showing proficiency in bridge delivery and maintenance. If no bridge is available, however, it will take less important things like courage or determination into consideration. Path of Exile has a pair of gauntlets called Surge Binders, and another set of gloves called Voidbringers. The Adventure Zone by the McElroy Brothers includes a character called Sazed, who essentially serves as a steward to one of the main characters, as well as a talking sword presumably inspired by Nightblood. There's an axe pommel in God of War called Mistborn. They reference the Well of Ascension in Divinity Original Sin 2. Godfall is heavily inspired by Stormlight. And at this point, we all know Kelsier is in Fortnite. However, that's not the first video game Kel specifically has snuck into. Back in 2013, a ghost appeared on a hilltop in World of Warcraft. The ghost of Rieslek, complete with tasseled cloak. If you pickpocket him with a certain ability, you can disguise as him for five minutes. In the basement of the nearby Ravenholt Manor, you meet a wraith called Orsur, who gives you the survivor's bag of coins, which basically turns you into an allomancer in-game. And then, of course, the king of nerds himself, Henry Cavill, is a Sander fan. Number nine! Not only does Brandon love playing Magic the Gathering, but he's written for them too. The novella Children of the Nameless is set on the plane of Innistrad, basically Wizards of the Coast's perpetual gothic Halloween world, and centers on a planeswalker named Davriel Kane. His card could have been so much cooler. Even if you know nothing about MTG, it's a fun little romp that's actually available for free on Brandon's website. Though, Magic isn't the first game property he's created story for. Y'all remember the Infinity Blade games? Super fun. Super sad they're basically impossible to play now. Well, Brandon wrote two novellas based on them, given free reign to develop lore and magic systems in order to essentially justify game mechanics. The hard copies of these books are incredibly difficult to find, but if you want to read the ebooks, I was able to track down a little viewed video with a link to an obscure Discord server that I will put in the description. Seems legit, but, uh, good luck. And then, as announced last week, Moonbreaker by Unknown Worlds, the studio behind Subnautica, is set in a new universe of Sanderson's own creation. From what I've gathered so far, it sounds like a combo of Dune, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Overwatch, but with miniatures. He first talked about this under the codename Soulburner in the state of the Sanderson in 2015. So it's been in the works for a while now. So if you're into tabletop mini collecting, this is going to be amazing. Honestly, the gameplay just looks super fun as well. Number 10! Speaking of magic, though, he's actually a little more heavily involved than you might expect. For years, Brandon has worked closely with artist Steve Argyle. You may remember seeing him on a couple of Brandon's streams. He did all the Night Radiant artwork and coin design for the Way of Kings Leatherbound Kickstarter, and he's illustrating Secret Project 2, not to mention showing up in Rhythm of War as Stargyle the Lightweaver. But more people probably know him as the artist behind Bloodbraid Elf, Chandra Ablaze, or Daenerys of the... Gamora of... Liliana of the Veil. Vale. In the Gate Crash set, though, he also painted one Urbis Protector, a human cleric who might look a little familiar. Yep, that's Brando Sando. He's on a magic card. And we're gonna be giving a couple away! I have here two copies of Urbis Protector, foil and non-foil, signed by Brandon Sanderson and Steve Argyle, that I will send to two lucky subscribers to my channel. Like, one to each person, not one set to both. If you want to get in on it, subscribe here and follow my other socials. Then comment on this video with one thing you learned about Sandon Branderson. And you know what? If you support me on Patreon or YouTube memberships, which I just set up, I'll give you an extra entry. Winners will be picked on September 10th and announced in my next video, September 17th, in which I'll actually be interviewing Mr. Argyle himself.
contingent on post-DragonCon negative COVID tests. Once again, to enter, subscribe, follow, and comment, and maybe get your friends to do it too, and then steal the card from them if they win. Cosmere Connections Part 3 is coming after that, so let's read and find out! I am legally required to say I was joking about telling you to do crime.